Au revoir, I'm Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 11, 10, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website, at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You'll see it right on the right-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, when you get that, you're going to get a lot more than a newsletter. You're going to get a newsletter. You're going to get all the graphs and charts that send out, Steve sends out every single morning. And you're going to get a bunch of archives so you can understand how Steve looks at the market and trades this market each and every trading day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? The madness of March is what's going on. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, who, who could? I, I wonder what the odds are or were of San Diego State, FAU, University of Miami, UConn getting through. That was kind of that's kind of normal. But for those other three schools to make it into the Final Four, the odds have got to be just. You know, and you know, the, you know where this gets interesting too, folks. And Steve, this is where this whole pay deal, where yes. you know, has has it on. And guess what, folks. This is why Florida is booming also. If you saw there's two schools in Florida, okay, out of the four, uh, yeah. the bottom line is that people down here, the alumni down here are out of their mind, meaning in a great way, okay? So, um, Absolutely. And, and, and the FAU alumni, the, the, really, you know, for, for kind of one of Florida's smaller, large schools out there, I mean, they're big time into it. That's right. And, and, you know, you and I know this, but folks, a small college in Florida is a monster school. <laughs> yeah, 40,000 people, right? A small, small college is 30, 40,000 students. Exactly. Right. And, you know, when I, when I first saw it and then, you know, I, I got to catch that uh, Charles Barkley uh, interview last night. And, okay. Okay. Um, you know, it, you know, he says it like it is. He's, he can't stand yes. it. You know, I'm not, I don't agree with him. I think they should get paid. But the bottom line is that, you know, he said, hey, listen, man, it, it's very evident. He says, that's it. He says, they can move that quick. And he says, and people weren't expecting, you know, what they what they got so fast. And oh, it's, it's, go, it's wild, though, isn't it, man? Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing is I get to go down the street now. I'm going to go watch the uh, FAU team play that's you know, next season. I know. How <laughs> cool know? is that? We just go catch a game. Yeah, right. Right, right down there. So, uh, it. yeah, it's going to be going to be interesting uh, 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 coming up uh, this next weekend and, and then the final game. Oh, yeah. So I, I thought we would do today, Tom. I know you were talking about gold earlier i just caught just a very little bit of it yes. what i thought we would do is is just uh, start with a blank monthly chart for gold for folks and maybe kind of walk them through some of the tools um that i that i share and that we utilize nice. that i utilize to help understand the market so let's start decorating this monthly chart and the first decoration or one of the first patterns that i have applied here is the monthly horizontal trading ranges. Now, this is a tool that was uh, taught to us by Bud Rolfs. Again, uh, Tom, thank you for bringing you know, Bud to us. And what he did, or what I'm doing here on this charts, is we are looking for the, for the, for the data that I've got. So this takes me back to 2002. So we get back from 2002 to where we're at today. Yeah. What this tool does is this identifies the largest number of co-located opens or closes. In other words, it doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close, but it needs to be either an open or a close of a, a candle. And what it does, it seeks out the largest quantity, the largest number. The largest number is 21 closes, and that exists near the $1,318 level. The next largest number is at 1181. It's not exactly 1181, but it's very close to it. Okay. There's 14 closes there. What that does, Tom, is that sets up a 137 point range. And once we have that, all the different sequences that we see here, these lines, they're all 137 points apart from each other. Right. Here's what we know. What we know is the 2004 level is a significant resistance area. That's where price got up to uh, this month. I, uh, I Again, I, th I think you were talking about price getting back up to that area, 2005, maybe, something like that. But this is a key resistance level that if price can close above on a monthly time frame, the month is not over, obviously, um, that would be a bullish outcome. Otherwise, that's a key level of resistance. That's the horizontal trading range. Yes. A second set of patterns that we can put up here, um, and this ties into your thought process about maybe a pullback 
back and then we move higher out here. The second set of patterns is these TAS market profiles. Now, we're looking at the same monthly chart, just decorated with a different tool. And what we can see here is that price is trading above resistance. That's at 1849. So gold, certainly on a monthly basis, I have to say, when you trade above resistance is bullish. So that's the monthly time frame. That's what this uh, tool shows us. Another uh, thing we can take a look at are just simple trend lines that people can draw on there. I've got one at the top, one at the uh, bottom. Another set of lines that we can identify is uh, price channels. So here I've drawn in a longer term uh, price channel. Again, we're still looking at the same chart, monthly chart here for gold. Look at that, Once huh? price yeah. yeah, once price breaks out of a price channel, just like we did the horizontal ones, Tom, once price breaks out of a rising or descending price channel, we can add same distance. So we're doing the exact same thing as we did horizontally as we would diagonally is we just add that uh, that that value, that distance. And here I've drawn that in and we can see that uh, price still is above those channel lines. So if I draw the exact same distance again. Whoops, look at where price stopped when we got up to the highs in 2011. Look at that, yep. Again, just using the, the trend line. So we know that these are another important tool to help us understand what the market is doing. We're looking at the bigger picture here. This iteration shows a rising price channel with inside a larger set of price channels up there. So those are the green diagonal lines. Now, what's not shown here very clearly, uh, it's kind of faint, is that the actual high that we saw this month, Stopped right at that mid line of this little green rising price channel. So, again, resistance, resistance, resistance um, with regard to these channel lines that we're taking a look at. This is the fully decorated chart. And so on the fully decorated chart, we get back to the 2004 area. That's resistance, both the horizontal and the diagonal uh, um, uh, price channel resistance. And from a support standpoint, I would come back to about the 1729 area. That's the horizontal trading range boundary line. That's below where we're at right now, above, you know, below the 1860 level and is the center of a profile and runs right into another rising price channel. So on that pullback that you're anticipating, 1729 would be an area that I would be watching. It's not that price can't get below that, but that would most certainly be a very logical area for all of us to watch. Now, last week, and I think you did mention, maybe it was Larry, but the last week marked four consecutive higher weekly gold closes. What I have on this chart, so this tool, Tom, looks at consecutive higher closes or consecutive lower closes beyond just one close. And what you can see out here up at the highs, look at how often we see four consecutive weekly moves. They're not all four consecutive weekly moves, but once we get to that fourth consecutive weekly move, we typically see a move lower. So this supports your idea of uh, gold pulling back, and we should pull back for two to four weeks. Now, I don't recall, you might have been talking months, I don't know, Tom, but I, you know, I'm not just on the weekly charts, so I only have the weekly to take a sure, look at no, here. No, right, right. You know, but a pullback for two to four weeks absolutely makes sense. It would just follow just the normal pattern that we have out here. But if gold is going to move lower, it needs to close below this daily number here. So this is what people can track. Watch 1947 or thereabouts. That's my oscillator and change line. Gold needs to close below that on a daily time frame to really support this idea of a uh, further pullback. So that's utilizing trend lines, channel lines, um, and again, all that stuff is taught with inside the Mastering Probability newsletter. Great job, Steve, great job. Thank you. And listen, Thank folks, it's, you know, you just saw what we, you know, Steve went through. It's clear, like, really clear. I think so. Get get, it is, it is, <laughs> man. Get over to our website at TFNN. You're gonna see newsletters. You're gonna see Steve's newsletter right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability, hit that button. Folks, the bottom line, 29 days, it's free. You want to have it for 30 days? Okay, no problem also. Have a great one, Steve. Have a safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank Take you. you Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.